Today we're looking at a problem that involves a couple of objects, uh, both experiencing a different kind of motion. Uh, in this case, what we have is two vehicles on a highway, a motorcycle and a tractor. The motorcycle is traveling 12 meters behind the tractor and decides to pass them, uh, accelerating at 3.50 meters per second squared. Both of them were traveling at 45.00 kilometers per hour, and the tractor in this problem maintains that constant speed while the motorcycle passes it. So we'd like to know two things. How long is it going to take to pass the vehicle? and how long or how far will have each have traveled in that time frame. So since we have this kind of problem where there's two objects, we should establish two columns or two sets of information to begin. So I'm going to put on one side a motorcycle and on the other a tractor. Make sure I spell motorcycle right. That would help. There we go. So the motorcycle as a vehicle that's experiencing acceleration, I'll say that its initial speed is 45.00 kilometers per hour. And it's usually best just to go to meters per second. So we convert that over as 12.50 meters per second. And we have an acceleration value of 3.50 meters per second squared. Now for the tractor, it's not a, an initial velocity or a final velocity or anything. That's just this constant speed value of speed of 12.50 meters per second. Is that 45 we'd saw before? Um, <clears throat> so now what we run into is a kind of a stalemate at this point because we have information for the motorcycle, we have initial speed and acceleration, and I have information for the tractor, but that's really it. I mean, for the motorcycle, you're looking at an accelerating body and all the equations we have involve four variables and we only have two here. And with the tractor, although it's the constant speed equation, it involves three variables and we only have one. So independently, these two uh, won't give us enough information really to do anything with it. So we have to combine them somehow. We have to set up conditions that are true with this problem and see if we can combine them. So, you know, logically, you think about it, if the problem begins when the motorcycle starts to accelerate and ends when it reaches the tractor, we could state that the time frame that the motorcycle is moving should be equal to the time frame that the tractor is moving. Now, as well, we can take a look at the distance. And if we say the distance of the motorcycle and compare it to the distance of the tractor, we have to make them equal somehow. And we know that they're not equal because the motorcycle starts in behind. So logically, the motorcycle should travel further than the tractor. So it should be a larger value. So I want these things to be equal. I should be adding the 12 meters to the distance that the tractor is traveling, which does initially sound counterintuitive because you're adding distance to a vehicle that's already ahead, but you're just trying to make the numerical values equal. The distance of the motorcycle, the distance of the tractor, now they're going to be equal. <clears throat> so now we can combine them and take a look at a way of uh, expressing the distance of the motorcycle traveled as a new equation. So distance motorcycle traveled is VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. And the distance that the tractor traveled is constant speed times time. I elected to use this equation for acceleration because it involves the variables that I was given, the initial speed and the acceleration, the time frame that I had talked about, and the distance I had talked about. So those four variables are involved in this equation, so it's a logical choice. Now for the tractor, there's really only one equation I can use, the constant speed equation. So it's just uh, speed is distance divided by time, quick rearrangement, and I have something I can actually work with. So again, independently, these equations by themselves are not useful. But if I go back to my condition that I had here, the distance of the motorcycle, distance of the tractor, I've already expressed what those are. So I'm going to take that equation right here and insert it. And same thing over here for the tractor and insert it. So what I now have this new equation, VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. There's the distance that the motorcycle traveled equals distance the tractor traveled V delta T plus that 12 meters I'd mentioned before. The nice part is when you think about this for a moment, although I expressed in the problem that the speed was 45.00 kilometers per hour, since the two of them were traveling that same speed initially, I can actually take a look at this equation and say VI delta T, V delta T, wait, the times are actually the same, the initial speed and the speed is the same, so these actually cancel out, so I can eliminate this, and it makes the equation a lot simpler to work with. So now it's just going to be one half A delta T squared equals 12.0 meters. And I arrange for time, and it's just 2 times the 12 meters, divide by my acceleration, and square root. So I plug all that stuff in. I'm going to get 2.6186 seconds, and then sig fig something in 2.62 seconds, because the measurements I had initially, 12 meters, 45.00, and 3.50, so least amount of sig figs are 3, so I'm going to run that for my answer of 2.62. 
Now for the second part of the problem, I want to find out the distance that the two of them had traveled and I could find them independently. Uh, a way of checking your work is to ensure that the answers I get for part B are actually 12 meters um, separate. So I'll, I'll check it right now. Let's just flip it over. So the distance the motorcycle traveled is what I had stated, VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. I plugged that stuff in, 12.50 meters per second initial speed, time frame 2.0. Uh, 6186. I'll use a sig figs here because it's part of this problem. Plus one half. Acceleration 3.50 meters per second squared times the 2.6186 seconds squared. And I get 44.7 meters. So that's the distance the motorcycle had traveled. Now for the truck, it was ahead, remember, speed times time. 12.50 meters per second, that constant speed, multiplied by the time frame, 2.6186 seconds, and I get 32.7 meters. So again, I'd hope that these two would be 12 meters apart. I take a look, they are 12 meters apart, which kind of confirms what we'd had worked with in the initial part of the problem, stating that the distance of the motorcycle and the distance of the tractor were 12 meters apart. So everything works out really nice.